guys, it's me again. We got the Chevy Silverado 1500. This is the RST package Z71, um, three liter Duramax. This came with the factory Ranchos. Uh, we've had the Bilstein 5100s on the truck for a few months now, and it's been a huge improvement over stock. Uh, but it's time for a change, and we're gonna be taking the 5100s off and throwing on the Rancho Quick Lifts with the RS9000s in the back. Uh, stay tuned, we're gonna walk you through how to install these um, and show you guys how it's done. In addition to taking off the um, old 5100s, we're also gonna be swapping in new Bilstein upper control arms. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the, uh, the bolts holding the ABS lines on the upper control arm up here with a 10 mil socket. And then down here, we're gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt and this 10 millimeter bolt back here. Um, what this is gonna do is gonna allow us the most slack um, so that we don't accidentally pull on one of these wires and ruin your day. All right, once you got your ABS lines free, you're gonna take a 21 mil socket and break this tie rod loose. Once you have that tie rod nut loose, you take your uh, mini sledgehammer. Some people make tie rod tools. I like using the sledgehammer and strike the spindle. Uh, striking the spindle will get it so that this tapered um, ball joint breaks free and you're able to get that out of the way. There we go. Once you got the, the tie rod off, uh, you can go ahead and break the upper control arm off from the spindle. You're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket. When you have this nut threaded off, um, don't remove it completely because the uh, upper control arm will want to pop out and you want this nut here um, just just as a safety measure so that the um, upper control arm doesn't slam out and everything goes wild. As you can see, there's enough pressure on the factory bonded bushings that the upper control arm actually came out of the spindle on its own without even having, having to hammer it. Now, if the if that doesn't happen and you move the nut and your upper control arm is still in the spindle, you want to take your hammer and, and just strike the spindle here. It'll eventually pop out uh, with doing that. So now that you have the upper control arm loose from the spindle, you're going to take some safety wire and locate a spot to tie the, um, the spindle to. Uh, there's in the back of the upper strut mount, there's a little hole here. You could feed part of your safety wire through that hole. And you could then remove the nut and safety wire your spindle out of the way. And the reason why you want to safety wire this spindle up towards here is because if this spindle comes too far out, the, um, it'll pull your inner, your CV out from the inner and um, just gonna be a big mess. Now that you have the spindle uh, safety tied and away from your workspace, you're gonna take a 15 millimeter socket and wrench and we're gonna remove the two lower mounts. Upper control arm, or the upper mounts off. Um, there are a, a couple of plastic pieces here that get attached to the upper studs. So you're gonna wanna take a pry bar, flathead screwdriver, anything you can to get these um, popped off. It's it's not threaded on or anything. It, it will take some force, but you just go in there and you slide those off of the thread. With your wire containment plastic piece out of the way, you can go ahead and take your 18 millimeter wrench and remove the three top nuts.
when taking the strut out, uh, having the sway bar is going to get in the way of you uh, being able to push down on the lower control arm. So you'll want to take your 18 millimeter socket. And uh, what I like to do is I'll unbolt the sway bar end link from the bottom of the lower control arm. Now to get your old upper control arms off, you're gonna wanna take 21 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench. And there's two bolts, one on this side, one on this side right here. You're gonna take your socket on this side and remove the bolt with your wrench over here on this side. With the increased um, droop travel, that the uh, new upper control arms are going to allow for. We're going to go ahead and cut off this droop limiting bracket. Um, the purpose of this was to make sure that your the factory upper control arms didn't um, droop out too far, causing issues with your ball joint. Now that you've had your um, bushings greased uh, and you have to make sure you have the right side upper control arms will tell you what side you're going to take your bolt that you removed uh with the previous upper control arms and you go go ahead and slide these new bad boys in with the bolts in place you're going to take one washer that's included with the upper control arms. And you're, you're gonna put this on the outside. Then on the other side, you're gonna take same thing. Washer here. And thread that nut on. Or tightening the lower or upper control arm bolts in, you wanna make sure you put some grease in so you're going to put some grease in the fitting. Slide that bad boy on there. And you're just going to want to push some in until you see uh, some grease come out of the side. You'll see a little bit of the, the grease kind of come out of the bushings. You don't want to put too much, just enough to you see some kind of squeeze out from the sides. Because once you tighten everything up, um, more will get pushed out. And you just don't want too much to have to clean up. Now that you got your bushings all greased up and neat and nice, um, it's time to take your 21 millimeter socket and your 21 millimeter wrench. And we're gonna get this torqued down. Uh, these two, you're gonna wanna make sure they get torqued to 90 foot pounds. And one of the nice things about having aftermarket upper control arms like this versus the OEM upper control arms is you could, um, you could torque these down um, without having the truck be at ride height. Uh, the reason for that is because these don't use a bonded rubber bushing like the um, like the factory upper control arms do. So um, there's no uh, preload on the bushings that you have to worry about. Now, when you, when you get those that bolt tightened down, um, some of that grease that we had squirted in earlier is going to want to squeeze out. So just you can go ahead and take a towel and wipe off the excess. Too much grease isn't going to hurt you, but um, having too much grease will attract a little bit more dirt in you. You don't want that. You want everything to look nice.
Now, once you got your struts in place, you're going to go ahead and um, put the uh, upper mount in, get one of the nuts started threaded on so that um, you have something holding that strut up. And if you're working by yourself, like I am right now, you can take a jack and jack up the lower control arm so that you're not having to do multiple things at once. And doing this will allow you to slide the, the bolt in from the bottom to the uh, mount the, the bottom nuts onto the, or mount the bottom mounts onto the control arm. And with those on, you can go ahead and jack it up some more. Take the nut for your sway bar end link. <clears throat> Get that put on <clears throat> from the bottom. And then once you got your sway bar and link in place, go ahead and tighten your lower mounts. Yeah, everything down here mounted up. We can go ahead and finish tightening up these upper mounts. With the top nuts tightened down, we can go ahead and take the uh, plastic uh, wire container piece and slide that back into place with the top bolts in place we can go ahead and get the spindle lined up and put the uh, upper ball joint into the spindle from here you go ahead and get the safety wire moved out of your way You take the take a 17 millimeter socket, torque this castle nut down to 81 foot pounds of torque. Um, once you've reached 81 foot pounds of torque, uh, you're gonna see if the um, the castle nut lines up with the holes in the uh, spindle in the ball joint. Um, if it's not lined up, you're gonna want to make sure you um, tighten it more enough until you get to where you could line up the um, the hole with the castle nut and slide the cotter pin in. You never want to back the nut off to, to get to that point. Always make sure you're tightening it to, to get to that point. Once, uh, <clears throat> once you got your ABS lines in place, you're gonna take the new mounting bracket that's included with the upper control arms, slide your ABS lines through there, maybe give it a little bit of a spread, slide your ABS lines through there, give it a nice little clamp, and take your bolt up through the top, And your nut and your washer on the bottom. And you're good to tighten her up. Now with your ABS lines all safe and connected and away from any danger. Last and final step, take your tie rod, drop that in the spindle. Take your nut and tighten her up. All right, that wraps it up. We got the upper control arms in and the new quick lifts in. Um, with the new upper control arms, uh, as we mentioned, it's not necessary to run these with the uh, Rancho quick lift. Um, 
we just decided to put this in because the future plans for this truck is going to include lo slightly longer travel front suspension. Uh, we're going to go with the mid-travel suspension in the future. So we decided to put these on to make that swap a little bit easier uh, when it gets time to it. Um, but that's it. Now we're going to move on to the back. Shocks, super easy. All you need is a 21 wrench, a 21 socket, and you take the axle or take the mounts off. We'll start off with the lower mount. <clears throat> Now we have the Rancho RS 9000s at the number one setting. We're going to drive that around, see how it is, let you guys know how it is. Then we're going to go somewhere in the middle and then we're going to go all the way firm and let you guys know how that, how that is and how it compares to both the 5100s that we had on and also the factory Ranchos that came on the truck when it was bought brand new. That's it. Showed you guys how to put on the quick lifts on the front and the RS 9000s in the rear, along with the Bilstein upper control arms in the front. Now it's time for you guys to let us know what you think we should do next on the truck and what you would like to see. If you have any questions, give us a call, drop us a comment, shoot us an email, let us know uh, whatever questions you guys have or what you guys think we should put on here next. See you guys later. Ah.